Welcome to Confessions of an SEO. This is Carolyn Holzman. Here's where I will share my own experiences as an SEO. Since my start in 2009 as an SEO tester in later years, I also will share some of the things that I'm currently testing as well as some of the research data that I'm collecting. Now, the views expressed here are my own, and they do not and will not necessarily reflect those of Google. I don't think that they're driven to have yours or my business's best interest at heart, so I do not regurgitate Google announcements. I watch their feed. So if you're an independent or an agency SEO, I get you. And if you're a business owner and a stakeholder who really doesn't understand SEO, well, you will never guess, but before I was turned into an SEO, I was a local business owner for decades who thought a lot about how to get more customers. So let's get started. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 30. Now, this is Week 7 of the Summer Editions of Confessions of an SEO. So I'm coming to you today from the Green Mountains of Vermont. And when I say that to someone else in SEO, you know, I can see the thoughts on their face. But the ability to say that came from an idea I had in the year 2000. When I was neck deep into CD manufacturing and stressing on CD release dates and UPS shutdowns and loose shrink wrap, and my family went to Vermont for a week. Now, after that, I had an idea that I wanted to do meaningful to me work that could be done from anywhere and make a decent living doing it so that I could spend my summers where I wanted to be and, frankly, to be able to outrun a Texas summer. So overnight, no, I mean 22 years later, here I am. And it just goes to show you that ideas sometimes need to have feet put underneath them. So uh, I was having lunch with an SEO buddy a few weeks back, and, and he asked me, his question was, well, outside of your indexation research, are you doing anything else? And yes, yes, I am doing something else. Um, I wasn't looking for it, but I got a call and I had an offer to basically work one hour a week and make mad money. It was too good to be true. Turns out it's more work mad and have one hour off every week. (laughs) It's getting ridiculous, but I do love being on the front lines. It's a have a massive site with local presence across the United States, breaking into local an all-on-one domain. Pretty fun. You know, it's not your normal client SEO situation. And the only thing that sucks in my day are the things that take me away from the inside details of a page that I'm optimizing. So now we're over that. What's what 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 would be a good thing to talk about today? And I was I was thinking this week about ah what a horrible job we as SEOs Uh, do when it comes to sort of, I think, explaining what we do, not as a justification, but more as a way to prepare, to prepare clients for what they're about to encounter. And so I guess, and trust me, this will make sense, you know, this will make sense. One of the things I was thinking about was, you know, what is an SEO success? And I guess what I should say is, what should a client consider an SEO success? You know, because we, we need to be in agreement about it. You can't have an SEO that's going like, we're doing great. And the client says, I hate you. So what is that success? Um, is it a sale? Is it a, is it a form that gets filled out on the website? Is, is it an appointment? Is it a phone call? Now, I I think it's all of the above, but it's a slow handoff from all the SEO work over to the business, I think, is is that SEO success. Now, just like, you know, those gleeful granola-eating tree huggers, as they say, as the bee goes, so does this planet, it's, it's a question of the fundamentals when it comes to SEO success. Now, I, for one, view SEO, search engine optimization, as everything that has to happen and must happen before the click. And after the click, 
in my opinion, is all CRO, and that is conversion rate optimization. So you're making that click convert to the next step in your sales cycle or funnel, you know, which is kind of where I see that Passover I talked just now about between what is the responsibility of the SEO to now the responsibility of the client. It now becomes their responsibility to nurture that lead that came in from all that SEO work. And frankly, just to not F that up. And I think for business owners that only want to pay on a, on a closed deal, you really should just hire a salesperson. So where am I going with this? Well, as you may know, I have been up to my eyeballs in indexation matters, server logs, Google bots. Now it's, it's almost been a full year. August 28th will be the one year anniversary of the indexation research. Now, if I'd kept track of the hours, I think I would have faded if anybody would have told me a year ago that I would do this. So maybe it is a good thing that I do not know. So the other day I, I was helping another SEO and in the course of closing out the conversation, you know, they asked me, you know, what are the courses was I doing other than the live indexing training that I did on July 24th? And I, in that, I shared exactly what I use in my indexation test to know if a page is indexed as defined by findable by its keywords. You know, they said, oh, that's great and all, but, you know, if I knew any courses that would show them how to boost rankings, they would be very interested. Now, I'm going to go back to the bee story. You know, how do bees keep us alive? You know, they do some pretty basic activities, but without their participation in those basic activities, we couldn't survive. There, there really wouldn't be that much for a human to eat. Likewise, indexation keeps our businesses alive. You know, if you trace back that sale or that transaction, and humor me for a minute, uh, let's, let's literally walk our way backwards, starting from the, the sale and just, just, just admitting, you know, what has to happen before that, that, that activity. So for instance, if we started a transaction, what has to have happened before that to make that sale possible? Well, a visitor, it has to be a visitor that got really interested in something on your page. Okay. Well, what happened before that? Well, likely that page started to rank and started to rank in a position where people who do look for that thing, whatever that is, page one is their most likely target. Um, that's where they came from. So what happened before that? Well, let's say before that page was on page one, maybe it started to get impressions and impressions are like, you know, how many times did people search for our topics and our pages got pulled into that search? How, how many, you know, it doesn't mean you're on page one, you could be on page 150, but you're going to get an impression. So how many times do people look, look for that topic? Okay. So Obviously, at that point, Google decided our content was relevant. So what happened before that? Well, you know, Google has to rank that page. Yes. So what happened before that? Google had to index it. And this is where, you know, SEOs will debate at what point is a page index. But let's just agree that for the sake of this discussion, it's when it's findable by its keywords. So it may not be all that high in the rankings, but it is in the game. So what had to happen before that to make that possible? Well, Google had to crawl it. And what had to happen before Google could crawl it? Well, Google had to find it. And, and this is where, in, the, in these last few things, this is where much of that technical SEO activities, this is where we benefit from them. So you could, through that little history, backward history, you could make the case that by making a site findable is the basis of all online business. But, you know, we, we do kind of take that for granted because we expect that the website designer will make the site so that Google can find it. 
and we assume Google can't wait to crawl. Well, until last year, I mean, prior to last year, indexation was practically instantaneous in our experience. And, and we know now that it no longer is, you know. But I think part of the reason that I can continue to justify spending so much time on indexation research is for the reasons that from indexation onward, from that indexation point all the way up through the transaction, um, that point is where everything moves out of our hands and the process relies on Google to function as they say it does. Now, you know, it comes back into our responsibility as a business owner, let's say, after someone uh, clicks on your page and starts interacting with you, then then it's back in your hands, right? Google brought it to you. Now you have to close it or nurture them until you have the opportunity to close them. All right. So saying all of that, what if... And I understand we don't want to think this, but if we did think this, what if we actually spent some time thinking about how vulnerable our businesses are if we just rely on online markets? For example, the Google search engine. What if Google doesn't work properly? How would you know? Those are two questions. What if it doesn't work? And if it's not working, how do you know it's not working? You know, a lot of people build projections based on certain assumptions. And if Google isn't working and they see a drop off in their traffic or their revenue, they immediately blame their SEO team or agency because they just assume that Google is never broken. So how would you know? And if you think Google is going to issue an announcement, hey, folks, we know that we're messing with your ability to pay your employees and send your kid to summer camp, but we're having trouble with indexation. So until we get it figured out, you'll just have to buy more ads to make up for the lost organic revenue. I mean, these, these thoughts, these are literally the things that keep me up at night. Now, I, I toy with the idea of sunsetting the indexation research, you know, when I hit the one-year mark. No one's really interested. I mean, they, they, they are interested, but it's not exactly a profit center for me. Then they aren't so interested in things like this because SEOs want to know where the magic button is. And by God, they're going to continue to look under every rock until they find it. And, and that's where I think in this pursuit, we do our industry and our clients a disservice. You know, we need to be better at training them what an SEO win looks like in our books, you know, uh, they don't, they don't like it. You know, you're going to say something to a client and they're just not going to like it. And honestly, I think you need to look at that as you dodged a bullet. If we educate the clients that are willing to be led on a path to success, we cannot promise leads at first. We can promise them increased impressions first that will also likely show more keywords. So you get more impressions and you have, you know, greater presence. And then they'll likely see more traffic because they had more positions and people who are looking for that, now they start to see them. And then from that, you move into clicks and from clicks into calls or forms or whatever it is that, you know, the call to action is. And finally, a sale. I think we need to be realistic about Google. They are not infallible. Their tools aren't precise. Analytics works on sampling. If, if you want precision, you have to look at your server logs to know how many visitors you got. And Search Console is not a rank tracker. And shock, the URL test button in Search Console is not always correct. They will tell you that you're blocking with a, a, a tag to no index, but you're not. Now, in some ways, I feel like we are our own worst enemies. You know, if we insist, here, here I'm going to describe what I think is ideal, all right? I think we need to insist on working with reasonable clients. We need to treat them with respect and ask for that same respect in return. 
we could make it possible, I think, to lower the friction between, you know, what a client wants and what they see, help them interpret this a little bit better, create another reason for what they see. For example, while Google is doing the best job it can, it is not error free, and they're not going to tell you when they make a mistake. And that's why you're here. So, you know, somebody actually checked to see if Google was working today. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you for being a listener and special thank you to all the sponsors that help support this work for their sem- themselves and others. If you would like to support this podcast and the SEO research, you can Google confessions of an SEO sponsor and click on any of those links and you'll see that, or you can use the short link. It is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash confessions sponsor, two S's in the middle. Please subscribe to Confessions wherever you're listening. It's on Audible, Amazon, Spotify. And if you just don't like signing up on accounts, you can simply Google Confessions of an SEO and you can't miss it. Let's make more business and success together. Let's strive to understand each other and Google better. We're all after the same thing. It's been my pleasure to be your host. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the service.